What's up? Hey guys, Mike Bills, what's going on? I hope you guys are having a really good day. So in today's video, we're going to be attempting to do some fuel economy testing on this generator that we built. So if you haven't checked out any of the build videos on that, go check that out. As you can see right now, it has a Predator engine on it because I was doing some more testing, but I'm gonna put the original, our original Amazon diesel that I have sitting here, and then I'm gonna hook up this test tube in order to have like some sort of way to measure, like quantitatively measure fuel burn. All right, so for this fuel economy testing I wanna do, my idea is I'm gonna mount a test tube with the fuel line going to the injection pump right here. And the idea is I'm gonna measure like, I don't know, 10 milliliters of fuel, and we're gonna run it until it uses 10 milliliters of fuel at, you know, a thousand watt load. And the watt hour meter is actually gonna record the watt hours. So I just need to reset it between engine changes and we'll be able to see exactly how many watt hours we produce for the volume of fuel. And then we can do some basic math. I also have two other engines I wanna test. We have a Harbor Freight Predator 212. So just your standard from Harbor Freight. Just because I have it, I think it'd be kind of cool and it's gasoline. And then I also have the big diesel. So we did an unboxing of this in a previous video and I haven't really done anything with it. So I went out and bought a one inch shaft pulley by three and point, this is a 3.5 inch. This actually fits a little loose. Maybe it's a 70, I don't know. But we're gonna use this pulley. It's a 3.5 inch by a one inch shaft. Test. I just wanna test basic fuel economy of these three engines. So I don't know if I'm gonna do them all in this video, but we're definitely gonna do the small one, see how long it takes us and then we'll hot swap the engines. I know this one will fit on the cart. I don't know about this one, so I might have to drill some different holes to get it to fit. And yeah, that's kind of the rundown of what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the test tube mounted, get the fuel lines connected. I also have to run a fuel line from here to the return. And normally it returns into the tank, but I think I'm gonna have to run this into the test tube. Otherwise we're gonna be returning fuel and it's gonna look like it's using more fuel than it is. So I do have to figure that part out. Not really sure I'm gonna do that just yet. But yeah, let's get started. Let me step back and show you everything. Oh yeah, look at that. Three engine testing, yeah. And who knows guys, maybe in a future project, maybe we'll try to take this big old 400 plus CC 10 horsepower diesel and stick it on this Coleman. And what do you guys think? Is that something I wanna see? Cause I'm getting a lot of comments that you guys wanna see me put this on something crazy. So I'd be down to do that. It would all definitely take some modification, but whew, I think we could do it. So yeah, if you guys wanna see that, let me know. All right, so we're draining the fuel tank. That way this doesn't make a big mess. There's no fuel shut off. The reason why I'm gonna connect this to a test tube instead of just pouring a set amount of fuel letting the engine run dry is because if you run a diesel dry, you have to reprime it. So I think the easiest way to do it is just get a set amount of fuel in here, get the engine running, get it up to a certain level and that's it. And we're gonna go maybe, like I said, probably use 10 milliliters and see how much power that gets us because that'll be an easy number to replicate. And I'm probably gonna do the test three times per engine. So I'm gonna run it on 10 millimeters, 10 milliliters, reset the watt hour meter and that's it. And we're gonna just take three readings each that way in case there's any weird variables or something, or maybe the engine's warming up or whatever. So that's kind of the idea I had. But yeah, just getting the fuel all drained. I also did remount this because it was bouncing around a lot. So it felt like there was actually less vibration on the frame because of how sturdy it is. So I did go ahead and weld a piece of steel right here and then zip tied the heatsink block to that. And then our output is just right here. And then I have the watt hour meter pretty secured as well. So hopefully that doesn't bounce around too much. I do have to look up how to reset this because as soon as I hook power to this, it's just gonna show what we've already done. So I do need to figure out how to do that. And then we need to go ahead and connect the jumper cables to the battery itself. As far as the load goes, it's just gonna be our 48 volt power system. So you guys have already seen this in other videos. Uh, right now it's actually almost fully charged. So I have the mini split on high cool because it's kind of warm today. So the mini split's running, pulling down the battery bank a little bit and we're gonna go and connect our jumper to here and we're gonna be able to measure how much power we're putting into it via the watt meter outside. So I am running it right now, the solar is turned off, so we're just gonna discharge this a little bit. That way, you know, the batteries don't go straight to float and then our load that we could put on the generator goes down. So that's kind of the idea. Alrighty guys, I got the fuel system all connected. So graduated tube, barb in the bottom, and then just a piece of hose, fuel hose going to the engine. So now I'm gonna fill this with fuel. Hope there's not a ton of air in it. I might have to crack the line to bleed it a little bit and get this thing running. And then once the engine is running and kind of warmed up a bit, then we're gonna set the fuel level to the exact amount and we're gonna see how long it lasts. And I've already zeroed out the energy meter. So I think we're ready to do this. Let's get started. I got some fuel in there, but the hose is empty. So we need to, I guess, try to start it. I'm just gonna see if I can't get this thing running with the drill 
And uh, once I get the system primed, the engine running, and everything's good, like I said before, then we'll go ahead and start measuring. Alrighty guys, so the current shunt meter is zeroed out and we are at exactly 60. You can see with the meniscus, it's uh, in the right spot. So we're gonna fire the engine up and make some power. I'm only gonna turn it up just enough to make probably like 500 watts. All right, guys, so I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover here because it's going to be kind of hard to hear me. So basically the idea, like I said before, was we're just going to measure how many watt hours we're going to get per milliliter. And the test wasn't exactly 100% scientific only because I did adjust the load halfway through the test. But my thought process on that is that increased load is going to mean increased fuel burn. Now, there is going to be an efficiency curve with engines, especially diesels but I am running it at a relatively low RPM, so I do think I'm gonna get the best efficiency out of it with lower RPM, just because the engine's gonna make the most torque at the low RPM. So, not the most scientific test. I probably could have done better, and I promise in the next video, I will do a lot better. As you can see in this clip, I just kinda of sped it up, but basically every time it used 10 milliliters of fuel, whoops, I bumped the tube, I would go record how many watt hours, and I just did that each time and just to, just to try to get an average so the numbers were kind of inconsistent but I did get an average that I think will work and it does kind of make sense looking at it when I did the math so just thought I'd throw that out there as far as the load goes it was really low at first and I did increase it but yeah that's it I just wanted to kind of chime in a little bit and say that this is kind of just noisy so there's nothing really to listen to but as far as efficiency goes I am very happy with it it does seem to be relatively efficient As far as the testing setup I built to do this, it seemed to work perfect. The test tube, I'm sorry, the graduated cylinder, I kept calling it a test tube, it's a graduated cylinder, my bad on that. That seemed to work really good. It seemed to be a, it seemed to be a very accurate way of measuring fuel consumption with the watt hour meter. So assuming the watt hour meter is accurate, this should be pretty close to as good as we're gonna get. It will be interesting to see how we will compare this to the gas versus the other big diesel. You would assume the other big diesel will use more fuel but the pulley on the big on the big diesel is actually a little bit bigger. The one on this one is a three inch. The one on the big diesel is 3.5 inch. So we will be able to churn the same RPM, make similar power with a little bit lower RPM. So that may actually help us. And being, like I said, being a diesel, we're gonna make low wind torque anyway. So that may be kind of interesting. It may just burn more fuel because it's so big. You know, who really knows, but. Anyways, we're about to conclude the test. So thank you all very much. All right, guys, so we ran it from 50 to 40, 40 to 30, and 30 to 20. And every time it got to the mark on the test tube, I went over here and checked the watt hours, and these are the numbers I came up with. So a little bit inconsistent, but not terrible, I guess. So I'm going to do some math. I probably should average these. And I'm going to see what our efficiency is based on these numbers right here. So it looks like it was getting anywhere between 15 to 20 watt hours per 10 milliliters of fuel. So I don't know if that's good yet, but we're going to do some math and figure it out. As far as the generator and everything else, it's working perfect. We were making about 600 watts there toward the end. I did turn it up. I assume this would be, there is efficiency range somewhere in this. We could maybe test that as well to see maybe it burns a little, if you get a little more energy for a little less fuel or vice versa or something like that, you guys know what I mean. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna do the math and show you guys the figures and probably wrap this video up. And then the next video, we're probably going to do the, either the Predator or the big one. So maybe let me know what you guys wanna see next. So you can go ahead and get these numbers figured out all right guys so here are our final efficiency numbers for the 196 cc chinese diesel engine on our particular generator setup so 196 cc engine it's a three phase well two three phase permanent magnet alternators together going through two rectifiers going straight to the 48 volt battery so here's what we came up with some of these measurements are approximate and i did a little bit of googling to kind of figure it out but anyway so let's start with one gallon of diesel 138,000 BTUs, and that is equivalent to 40,648 watt hours. The diesel used, as y'all saw in the test, 10 milliliters produced on average 16 watt hours. And the way I the way I came up with 16 is I averaged the three measurements going from 60 to 50, 50 to 40, 40 to 30, 30 to 20. 
I got these and I averaged and I got 16. So this, this could also change based on the load. You gotta remember that in engine RPM. So we use 10 milliliters to make 16 watt hours. One gallon of diesel is 3785 milliliters. So if I burned an entire gallon through the generator, it would be equivalent to 6,056 watt hours. And if you convert that over to actual efficiency from the fuel converted straight over to energy, we're getting 15%. So if you take the fuel straight to energy, it would be 40,000 watt hours. But if you take the fuel, run it through the engine, run it through all the losses we're getting, we're getting about 15% out the end. So that's not great, but that's what we're getting. I just wanted to calculate the number to see what it would look like. This number right here is pretty good because I watched some other people doing some efficiency testing on gasoline generators, and it was actually lower than this. So that's good. I do want to test this up against the gas engine and see what that's going to be, but this is probably going to be the number we focus on more than anything. So that's what I just wanted to show you guys real quick. This is the numbers we got out of the test. Let me know what y'all think. And in the next video, we're actually going to test another engine. So look forward to that video, but I just wanted to show you guys this. Let me know what you guys think of the test. Let me know if I could do any better and let me know if my math looks right. Thank y'all very much.